Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Five. I'm Pastor Steve, and my goal today is to help you get your day off to a great start. And the way we do that here on First Five is by spending some time together in the Word of God and in prayer. I'm convinced that as we study God's Word and as we dig into it and just apply it to our lives, that it just helps us to build a foundation for our daily lives, and I think you're going to be blessed by it. Every morning, I invite you to read with me one chapter of Scripture from the Bible, and we work chapter by chapter through each book of the New Testament. And so right now, we are in Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. Today, we come to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. And so I hope when we're all done, you'll take a few moments to read the whole of 2 Corinthians chapter 3. But for the purpose of our lesson, we're going to look at just a portion of it at the end, actually, this time. It'll be verses 12 through 17. So I would invite you to grab the Bible or uh, pull it up on your phone and join me in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, beginning in verse 12. Here the Apostle Paul is writing. Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. We are not like Moses who would put a veil over his face to prevent the Israelites from seeing the end of what was passing away. But their minds were made dull, for to this day the same veil remains when the old covenant is read. It has not been removed because only in Christ is it taken away. Even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil covers their hearts. But when anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory, are being transformed into His image, with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. In this passage, Paul is drawing on a well-known story from the Old Testament. You may be familiar with it. When Moses went up on Mount Sinai to meet with God, and to receive the Ten Commandments, something extraordinary happened. He heard the voice of God. He literally spoke with God and heard an audible voice of God. He received the law from God and carved it on stone tablets. And he experienced the glory of God. It's actually a great story where God places him in the cleft of a rock, kind of a, a split in the rock where he could be a little bit protected and God actually put his hand over himself as he walked by Moses and Moses was exposed to just a, a glimpse of the glory of the God Almighty. Having been in God's presence in this way, when he came back down off the mountain, and when he came and encountered the people, Moses' face literally radiated the glory of God. It's like he had this brightness about him, this shine, this glow, right? So much so that it actually frightened the Israelites. And so Moses would wear a veil over his face. Now, he did this for two reasons, really. Initially, it was because the glory of the Lord that shined on him, that showed from him, was too much for the people to even look upon. It was, it was overwhelming and frightening to them. So Moses did not want it to be uh, like just so much that they couldn't be in his presence, in Moses' presence, right? And so he veiled his face. But also, what the story tells us is that over time, that glory of God that Moses radiated began to fade. And Moses didn't want the people to know 
that that glory in him was passing. When Moses spent time in God's presence, there was evidence of it. It literally showed on him for all to see. And the veil, even that would not fully shield the glory of God. Now, let's go back and reread verse 18 where it says, And we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into His image. <coughs> Excuse me, I get too excited. With ever increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is Spirit. Paul is essentially saying to us, telling us, that the same glory of God can be reflected in our lives when we spend time in God's presence. Now for us it may not be a physical manifestation the way it was for Moses, but it shows in our lives as we become more and more like Christ. But the good news for us, says Paul, is that unlike Moses, our glory need not fade. It is possible for us to reflect the glory of God in ever-increasing, greater and greater degrees. How, though? How is that even possible? It's possible when we spend time in God's presence. As we immerse ourselves in the presence of God every day as we learn and grow in our faith, as we become more and more like Christ, God's glory shines more and more in our lives. And what is great about it is we, we need not veil that glory. To the contrary, Jesus says, let your light shine. Allow people to see the glory of God in you. Reflect Christ in the world in a way that draws others to him that they too might experience his glory would you join me in prayer lord this is just awesome i get excited just thinking about how we can radiate your glory lord it's not our glory it's it's your glory but we get to reflect it right it's like the moon reflecting the light of the sun we can reflect the light of your glory as we spend time in your presence and allow others to get a glimpse of who you are by the way we live by the way we speak by the way we behave by the way we treat others with love all of that is a reflection of your glory help us lord to reflect your glory in ever-increasing measure. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, everyone, have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you tomorrow. God bless.